الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد In Islam we don't take for granted our deeds because no one knows in which state they will die And the subject we're going to discuss is a hadith of Abi Abdurrahman Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who said or it was narrated <coughs> in Bukhari and Muslim on Abi Abdurrahman Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal haddathana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam huwa sadiq wa masduq inna ahadukum yujma'u khalquhu fi batni ummihi arba'in yawman نطفة ثم يكون علكة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك وينفخ فيه الروح ويعمر بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشقيون صعيد والله الذي لا إله غيره إن أهلكم ليعملوا بعمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار فيرخرها وأن أهدكم ليعملوا بأمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلى ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب يعمل بأمل أهل الجنة فيد فيدخلها رواه بخاري من مسلم This hadith that was narrated by أبي عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه هو الصحابي رضي الله رضي الله عنه مجمعين May Allah be pleased with all of them in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he said that the Prophet ﷺ said to us, and he is Sadiq al Masduq, meaning the Prophet ﷺ is, uh, was truthful in his speech, and he is the one who the people believe to be truthful. He, sp- he spoke truthfully, and the people believed him to be a truthful one. The people bore witness to this. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily one of you he will come together, talking about the creation of, of human beings, that when human beings, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allows for them, this is the process of uh, a person being born. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to create uh, human beings from the mating of the male and the female and he said and only one of you comes together in the form that he will come together in in the stomach of his mother for 40 days as mutfa as uh, a fluid like substance this is the mixing of the male and the female fluids after having relations then the person will be transformed, or the next stage will be that there will be a blood clot similar to that, meaning the 40 days. Then a per- piece of meat, you know, like a, a, they begin to take human form. Then after the, those 120 days, then an angel will be sent to him and will blow into, the, blow into him the soul. And he will write for him four things. His, the, the, the wealth that the person is going to acquire in this life, the length of their life, the deeds that they will do, and whether they'll be happy or sad. For by Allah, whose, whose soul, whose, whose hand my soul is in, that verily one of you will do the deeds of the people of paradise until what comes be between him and it will be an arm span length and he will do the deeds of the hellfire and he will enter it. And verily one of you will do the deeds of the people of, of, of uh, the hellfire until what becomes between him and the hellfire uh, he will become that close to entering the hellfire and what was written will overtake him and he will do the deeds of the paradise and enter it. In the 
this hadith narration of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we learn many things, and I want to read some of the benefits from this book called Qawaid wa Fawaid min al Arba'in and Nawawi. And this was written by Nadim Muhammad Sultan, a very, very beneficial book. And may Allah preserve him and bless him to continue to bring us very beneficial works. So he brings about the, it's, it's a book based on the principles and the benefits from the 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala. So moving on to some of the benefits that he mentioned here, he mentioned after he mentioned some of the benefits. He said, "Wujub al Imam bi Qadr." He said, "From this hadith, we learned of the obligation of believing in the Qadr, the divine destiny that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has written for us." And he goes on to say, he says, "Qulhu sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa yumur wa yumur bi arba kalimat." Where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, and the angel was commanded with four things when he's blowing the soul into the uh, to the womb of the woman the soul into the uh, child that is being uh, that is developing in the womb of the mother and he said those four things he writes the wealth the lifespan and the deeds and whether this person will be happy or sad we have a nukta من الحديث من هذا الحديث في من هذا الحديث تعرض صلى الله عليه وسلم لقضية من قضاء وقدر هي تتعلق بالعلم الله الكامل الذي يعلم ما كان وما سيكون وكيف يكون. So he said that in this portion of the hadith, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم clarified for for us. The issue of the qada wa qadr, the issue of the divine destiny uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, determined for us as human beings. And it relates to the knowledge, the complete knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because no one, nothing has complete knowledge except Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, except Allah the Almighty, the creator of the heavens and earth. And then he said, the one meaning he's talking about referring to Allah, that Allah's knowledge is camel, is complete, is perfect, who knows what uh, will be, what is currently, you know, the he has full knowledge of what uh, what is in existence, and what will be in existence, and how it will be. Rabbana ala hadha العلم الكامل كتب سبحانه في الكتاب رزق الإنسان الذي سيحصل عليه أثناء حياته حتى يموت وعمل الذي سيقوم به من الخير والشر. And also related to this uh, complete knowledge of Allah سبحانه وتعالى is that Allah تبارك وتعالى Allah the Almighty has written for uh, mankind the wealth that they will acquire in this life. And when that person will pass, meaning when they will die, and also the deeds which they will uh, do in this life, the good and the evil. And also whether the person will be a person who is happy or a person who is sad and has difficulty in this life. وهذا العلم لا يرفع عن العبد الاختيار والقصد لأن صفة العلم غير مؤثر. This is very beautiful. So then he says, and then this knowledge, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa taala, the fact that Allah the Almighty has complete knowledge of all of these things, it does not negate the fact that uh, we as human beings have uh, a choice in matters. And that we have intentions, and then this is because the characteristics of knowledge does not have a effect upon those issues. It doesn't mean that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is forcing us to do actions, but rather we have free will to do uh, to do actions. 
كما أن النصوص الكثيرة في الكتاب والسنة تثبت أن الإنسان قصد وإرادة وحرية اختيار He said, and this is because there are many evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah which affirm for us that human beings have an intention and they have a will and that they are free, they have free, free will. And then he went on to say, after that he mentioned some other benefits of this hadith. I'll, I'll skip some of the things. Because we will discuss it later, but we'll go on to the main benefits he derived from this hadith. For I had a hadith. Astambata ulema'ina ulema'ina min had al hadith for I had kathira. Sa'adkur ba'dan minha. Wa muta'amal li had al istambatat yalhad ma min Allahi bihi. ما من الله من الله به على هؤلاء علماء من نعمة الفهم والثق الدقيق لأحاديث خير الأنام عليه خير الأنام عليه صلاة والسلام وصدق رسول وصدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هي نقال نظر الله عبد سمع مقالات فحفظها ووعاها وأداها فرد فرد حامل فقه غير فقيه فرد حامل فقه إلى من هو أفقه منه. Now was collected in Al Mishkat and Imam Shafi in and also in Jama Bina Musnadi he was Sunan Musnad Sahih. So Imam Al Albani. رحمه الله تعالى mention this hadith in al Mishkat in his book al Mishkat which is collecting of hadith and the Sheikh went on to say that the scholars have brought about many benefits from this hadith and they mention these uh, great benefits that they derive from this hadith and we are going to mention some of them and he said that in those scholars Allah has favored them. With understanding and uh, wisdom, and very precise wisdom of the uh, hadith narrations of the Prophet of the the, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, may peace and blessing be upon him. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had spoken truthfully when he said that Allah subhanahu wa taala has given uh, um, uh, has blessed one of his servants, has, blesses his servant. And giving light to him, the one that hears my speech, you know, hears something that the Prophet sallallahu said, and he memorizes it, then he uh, practices it and transmits this knowledge, because verily the, it's possible that the person who carries this knowledge, that his understanding, that he 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 has an understanding. Of this, uh, you know, he, he will increase his understanding, and that his understanding will be better than those around him. And it is possible that the one who also memorizes memorizes this knowledge and carries this knowledge, that his understanding will uh, not be as strong as the you know the person who he transmits the knowledge to. وذلك لأن العبد قد يحفظ كثيرا من الكتاب والسنة ولكن لا لا فهم ولا فقه له في النصوص فقد استدل يستدل بالنص بغير موضعه وقد يمر على موضع الدلالة بالنص ولا يعي ذلك ولا يلاحظه so then he went on to mention something incredibly important. He said, and the reason this is, is because that someone could memorize a lot from the Quran and the Sunnah, but they might have little understanding of it, and little wisdom from it, from the evidences. And they may not know how to use those evidences in applying the knowledge. <laughs> 